Hello everyone and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. How are you doing today? If you're doing well, you can show me with a thumbs up. If you're feeling okay, you can put your thumb in the middle. And if you're not feeling very well today, you can show me with a thumbs down. But hopefully after circle time is over, you'll be feeling better. So let's get started. Stretch your arms out like airplane wings. Let's fly to one side. Fly over to the other side, fly back to the middle, and take your airplane wings into a big circle out in front of you. Bring the circle up over your head. Let's stretch to this side. Stretch over to that side. One last stretch up at the top. And now it's time to sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Circle Time. I hope that you're having a wonderful day so far. We have three things that we need to do before we get started with the calendar and weather chart. First, let's turn on our listening ears. The next thing that we need to do is put on our thinking hats. Today my thinking hat has some snaps under my chin, so I'm going to snap it up. And the third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts, like this. Boom, 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 boom. So let's double check. Our listening ears are on. Our thinking hats are on and our hearts are all warmed up. Now we are ready to start. First, let's go over the date. The month is right up here. Do you know what the month is? July. That's right. The month is July. Today is July 20th. Yesterday was July 19th. And today is July 20th, and the year is 2021, but you can also say that the year is 2021. Both ways are correct. Friends, we have quite a lot of counting to do today. We need to count all the way up to the number 20 together, because you can see that the chip is on the number 20. That's how many days we've had so far in the month of July. So get those counting fingers out, warm them up. Let's also take a deep breath together. Are you ready to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We did it. We counted 20 days together that we've had in the month of July. Let's sing the Days of the Week song together. For this song, we're going to hold up seven fingers like this. And if you know the words, sing along with me. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Down at the bottom of the chart, we have the days to go over together. So listen carefully for the sound that the day starts with, and you can say the day with me if you know. Yesterday was M. Monday, the first day of the weekday. That means that today is t Tuesday, and tomorrow will be w Wednesday. Let's go back and sing Today is Tuesday together. Will you sing with me? Today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, all day long. Today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, 
all day long. Right up at the top, we have the season. What's the season, friends? Summer. It's summertime where I live. And let's travel back down and let's sing the weather song together before we share. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? Today, when I look outside of my window, the sky is gray and white and full of clouds. It's supposed to start raining soon. And my temperature chart is on orange because it's warm. Warm and cloudy today. What about you? What do you see outside of your window? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. So yesterday, we started talking all about this uppercase or capital letter. This letter makes two sounds. Can you make the short sound with me? That's right. The short sound sounds like this, eh. And what about the long sound? What does the long sound sound like? I. That's the long sound. This is a capital or uppercase I. Now it's time to move on to the letter box. But what I have today is not inside of the box. And you'll see why in just a little bit. I have something that starts with the letter I. It makes the short sound. Here's your first clue. This is a feeling on your skin and it makes you want to scratch. What is that feeling called? An itch. Itch starts with the letter I. I. When I get a bug bite, my skin is itchy. Has that ever happened to you before? When I have an itchy bug bite, I like to mush up the plantain leaves that I've showed you before and put it on my bug bite to make the itch go away. Itch starts with the letter I. I. This is how you write an uppercase I. I. One more time. Here's the number of the week. What number is this? Eight. You're right, friends. This is the number eight. Let's hold up eight fingers together. Five on one hand, and three more make eight. Let's count to the number eight together using the large bead frame. This week, we are going to be counting to the number eight eight together using the large bead frame. We will be counting the units, which are the green beads at the top. Let's count eight units together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight units. Inside of the box, I have eight flowers to count. These are some wild flowers that grow in my yard. And honestly, I don't know what they are called, what kind of flower they are. But they smell nice. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Eight wildflowers. Do you remember the sign for dinosaur? You take one of your hands and you point your counting finger up like this and you touch the remaining fingers to your thumb and make a walking movement like this. Dinosaur. 
Yesterday, we learned that a paleontologist is a person who studies past life on Earth, and that includes dinosaur fossils. But what is a fossil, and how does it form? A fossil is an example of something that was once living on our planet. This can include leaves, teeth, bones, and even footprints. So there are a few ways that a fossil is made, but I'll use a dinosaur as an example to explain how the most common fossils are formed. After a dinosaur dies in a watery and wet area, its body is then covered in mud. The dinosaur's skin will eventually decompose, leaving behind only the skeleton. And then over time, sediment and other organic materials cover the bones, which will eventually harden into a rock. And this is what the paleontologists dig for and uncover. I have an example of a fossil to show you. Would you like to see? Right here, I have a rock that's from my creek. And this rock is extra special because it has a few different fossils in it. If you look very carefully right here, you can see the imprint of a mollusk. So a mollusk is a soft bodied animal that has a shell. So if I look very carefully right here, I can see the ridges from the inside part of the shell. And right over here on this side, I can see the imprint of a leaf. Right here. And this example right here would be a trace fossil. So I have some imprints from a shell, a mollusk, and I have a trace fossil over here in this corner of the rock, which is an example of a trace fossil. There's the leaf. Would you like to make your own trace fossils today? Come on, I'll show you how. For today's work, we are going to be making some dinosaur impressions or prints. So right here, I have some salt dough balls that I made using a very simple recipe. I used two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and a half of a cup of warm water, and I just mixed it all together. And then I divided it into these small little balls. And I have some little plastic dinosaur figurines right here. And you can use any type of animal figurine that you have at your house. And you can also make impressions using organic material that you find outside. So maybe some leaves, maybe some branches or pine cones. It's completely up to you how you choose to make an impression or a print today. So I'm going to take one of my balls of salt dough and I'm just going to press my palm down on top of it like this, just to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to pick one of my dinosaurs. I'm going to use this Stegosaurus because I like the plates on the back and I think that that will look really cool as an impression or a print inside of the dough. So I have my Stegosaurus and I'm just going to gently press the stegosaurus down into the dough and then lift it up and you can see the print that the stegosaurus made. You can also make little prints or dinosaur tracks inside of the play-doh. So let's try this out and see what that will look like. Press my palm into the dough Let's see, I will use the Parasaurolophus and just make little footprints inside of the dough all around. And let's try one more. Maybe I will use this Tyrannosaurus Rex right here 
and press the T-Rex into the dough. Make sure his head gets in and the tail and remove the T-Rex. There we go. So once you have completed all of your prints and impressions that you will make, you can line them all up on a baking sheet and bake them in the oven at 250 degrees for about one to two hours or until the salt dough is hard. And again, I will leave a link to the recipe for the salt dough below in the description box. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. Once your fossils cool down, you can then paint them. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up, and be sure to find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. We have one last song to sing before we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.